If we went back to 1970, the day after your out-of-body experience. Nice time machine you're going to give right, me. That's yep. right. And, and we tried and we approached you and said and tried to convince you that this out-of-body experience was, could be explained using natural means. Um, what would it have taken to convince you? Would it, mm. would it, could it have happened? Would you have changed your mind very easily? How interesting. I, I think you should work on this time machine and we'll find out. <laughs> um, that, that's really interesting. I, I'm trying, 44 years, I, you know, <laughs> I've changed a bit. I think there would have been two things going on in my mind at once. Mm -hmm. And I think there even were during the experience those things going on. On the one hand would have been, but I know. I, you don't understand. You don't understand how real it was. I, you know, how can you possibly, it, it, you know, this is so important to me, sure. and, and 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 you know, it means so much to me. And simultaneously would have been going on, but there has to be an explanation. What's going on? I've always been a a, a scientist in the broadest sense since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. How does that work? What's this doing? You know, how's this fire? How could I, you know, yeah. and, and that would have been going on as well. I think if you'd approached me as perhaps some of the worst members of the sceptical community would be like, oh, that's rubbish, then I would have been absolutely against it. But if you'd come along and said, well, you know, could it be there's something in the brain? Could it be? I'd have been thinking, could be. Hmm. I might have been frightened because the day after I was so confused. I mean, I think you'd have to come a, little, a week later when I sort of <laughs> calmed down a bit. But... In a way, when people have these very dramatic experiences, and I've met lots of, lots of people um, who have, um, you feel threatened if somebody tells you it's not what you thought. And if you are a sort of rigid, closed-minded kind of thinker, and you, when you've had this extraordinary experience, you snap onto your own explanation, then it's very, very hard. You, you, you feel frightened when people say, ah, oh, yes, but it's happening in the amygdala or the prefrontal cortex, or whatever. And you go, no. But if you're more open-minded, if you're good at thinking, if you're good at asking questions, if you're good at exploring possibilities, then I think it's much easier. And if the person confronting you is also like that, let's explore this together. What, how did it really feel? And then what happened? And take an interest. Mm -hmm. Then I think I would have responded quite well to you and been, hey, he might be my saviour, let's go and find out. Right. But right. I didn't have a saviour. I had to go and find out myself in, a, in a, an age where... The science was, there wasn't any neuroscience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had very little idea what was happening in the brain. Um, the paranormal stuff out there in the new age and the, you know, the age of Aquarius and all that stuff, the end of the 60s, um, was like a world apart. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's taken me a lifetime, I would say, mm -hmm. to bring together extraordinary experiences and neuroscience. So a lot of people who are going to be watching uh, these videos and, and taking this course would have had something similar, uh, some vivid experience um, that they can't really explain. Uh, we've done these sort of questionnaires in this course and in others where um, students have heard a story from uh, parents about ghosts or uh, they've experienced something themselves. Uh, how would you, given what you know now about opinion change and, and uh, changing your own opinion, what would be the best way to approach somebody uh, and change their mind or at least get them to consider the alternatives that uh, it might not be what they think? I'm glad you made that switch. I don't go at anyone who's had an extraordinary experience. I want to change their mind unless they are just so rigid. I despair and I think I don't want to have anything to do with it, you know. But for most of the people I've met... Um, so many have had an experience they can't understand and they don't know what to do with it. The first thing to do is to listen and, and probe. See, some people will be very rigid, particularly I think of, of near-death experiences where it has so much of religious connotations. And in our culture this tends most often, not always, but to be Christians who are convinced that they have seen Jesus or uh, pearly gates. Um, the, the, the judgment day, they've been to heaven or they've seen heaven or they've seen hell. They've got all this baggage. Um, but what I first do is, okay, then what happened? Then what happened? Could you see, could you see anything else? And get them to loosen up. Mm -hmm. Because if what they've done is had this extraordinary experience, I mean, typically in an in-death experience, um, 
if, they, if it's a long run, they will typically start with a tunnel, like I did, and go into the light. They'll have an out-of-the-body experience and they'll watch what's physically happening or seem to. Mm -hmm. Then they'll go on to other worlds. After that, it becomes dependent on your culture and your upbringing. Mm -hmm. So if they are a religious person, Muslim or Hindu, whatever it might be, um, or a Christian, they, they kind of know where they are and they've, they've set their own experience in that box. Mm -hmm. So part of my job is to actually get them to remember other things. Mm. Well, what did these pearly gates like? Were they really gates? Or, you know, could, what else could you see around? And very often then they'll come up with all sorts of other stuff which they haven't really thought about, mm. which will help them to... The, the point is I'm grounding it in what really happened because yeah. I want to know because yeah. I'm always thinking what's going on in their brain? Where is this relating to you know, what's happening in the temporal lobe? What's happening in the visual cortex where we know the, the tunnels are generated? Mm -hmm. um, what kind of tunnel was it? What emotional state were they in when they started? Because very often these experiences have a most wonderful, profound sense of it's all all right, mm. which is probably endorphin based, but it's that saying that doesn't put it down that you know it's got to have a physical basis somehow but that can be quite an important thing also for people to know it is possible as a human being on this earth without God's spirits and everything else to know that it's all right and yeah. you're all right and it's okay so I sort of like to help people just to talk about the experiences um, sometimes that will lead them to their own interest and their own inquiry and they'll go off and read stuff and they'll talk stuff and I, you know, let them do that. Mm -hmm. Other times they'll just reject it and go, yeah, well, I know I saw Jesus. And, okay. Mm. I might want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah. you know, that's, yeah. it's not going it's not going to work. There's no point. Mm -hmm. I'd rather people use their experience as the basis to go and try and understand themselves yeah. and the world mm -hmm. than I would try to change their mind to the truth. We don't know the truth. We know little bits. We know a lot. We know as much as we can know that nothing leaves the body in these experiences, that there is no spirit, no soul, and so on. But there's so much more to find sure. out. So I can't do it myself. So these people who've had these experiences, actually, they're, in, they're important, and they're the ones who can, can explore more and find out more. Yeah. One of the real sort of knee-jerk responses with opinion change is just to remain passive and unconvinced, right? Yes, I know what you're telling me, but that's fine, I'm going to I'm gonna continue go my merry way yeah. and, and not do much about it. Yeah. And yeah, we're trying to provide students with the tools specifically to uh, look at the data, right? And, and to try not to remain passive and unconvinced. Figure out what it would, would have looked like, uh, you know, in other sorts of scenarios where it didn't happen just the way that, that it did in your I think this so is on. absolutely funda foundational to being, to being a good thinker. Um, Oh, that, that reminds me of two things. One, one is a bit depressing. It's when I used to do interviewing for admissions to the university, in the psychology degree, and I would set some kind of challenging scenario as purely hypothetical. What if it turned out that, yeah. you know, black people can't do this or, so, you know, some challenging thing? I'm not saying it's true. That it's not, I'm just saying, suppose it did, what are the possible explanations? Hmm. Now, the good student, the one I'm going to admit, says, well, I don't think it's true, but... If it were, it could be because of their upbringing, it could be because of whatever, it could be, it could be, it could be, it could be, uh, what, how would I find out, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And the student I'm going, to, I'm going to say no is going to go, but that's not true, but that's wrong, how could you say that? <laughs> you know? yeah. Um, yeah. And that's, yeah. that's sort of the rigidity. Yeah. But it also makes me think more about the kind of um, paranormal things that we're thinking about and the strange experiences that people have. The The... The student I would want, the student I would enjoy, would go. Well, I think that this happened, and you know. But hang on a minute. Okay, it's emotionally difficult. It's challenging to me. I don't like it. But let me imagine a purely mechanistic explanation. Mm -hmm. Let me imagine an explanation in terms of a religion that I don't know much about or isn't mine. Let me imagine, and they would actually be willing, despite the mm. it hurts. I don't like this to do that. Mm. Now. I've had a lot of experience in my life of that anguish. I mean, the world's a simple place if you know how it works. <laughs> and you know, I'm in here, I'm me, this is who I am, this is what I do, that's how the world... You know, it's a simple place. It, it's horrible, it doesn't work as a life strategy, but you feel, yeah. you feel you're going to be safe that way. Yeah. Now, you can imagine 
me having started out with all these beliefs, I mean, I honestly believed that out there is this great psychic field and that I was going to be the great hero, heroine of science who was going to change the world forever because I'd prove once and for all that there are paranormal phenomena. Duh, there aren't any. You know? <laughs> ah, this was not a comfortable time for me. It was horrible. I'm wrong. Now, also imagine me. I mean, not only with my crystal ball and my tarot cards, but I suppose I've got coloured hair still. There's a bit of that left. But, you know, the, the late 60s, early 70s, wafty clothes and headbands and, yeah. wow, peace, man, and, you know, all that. And, um, you know, I looked, everything about my life was, was like that. Yeah. I had to give up, well, let go of, yeah. um, let go of all of that in order to move forward, to ask questions, to learn. Oh, and I look back now, good, because, you know, I found out so much. Yeah. Also, all that led me to exploring a whole lot of different things. And the only one that stuck was meditation. Mm -hmm. And I've been training in Zen for 30 years. And that is also training in flexibility, letting go, yeah. openness to experience, openness to different explanations, and that training um, goes along very, very well with the scientific mind that asks questions and doesn't take the first theory I come up with as the truth and that's it. Yeah. So the goal of the course is um, to improve people's everyday thinking. Do you have any recommendations for how people in the course might improve their everyday thinking? Yes. Start with your intuitions. Watch yourself, feel those intuitions coming up and question them hmm. because some of your intuitions will be fine. Um, yeah, I think if I lean on here, it'll be fine. But some of your other intuitions, I'm in here looking out through my eyes. I know what that is. That person's nice, that, but a lot of your intuitions won't be. So question your intuitions and be willing to give them up hmm. if there's a good reason to do so. And that's hard, but yes, <laughs> some of those intuitions. <laughs> My name is Sue. I think about consciousness. Mm -hmm.